Now, the new MacBook Pros with the M4 looks super impressive, but did you know that Apple also did another update to their MacBook line? That's right, they've now configured the MacBook Air base configuration with 16 gigabytes of RAM inside of it. Now, a lot of you guys right now are gonna go think, oh, I'm gonna jump straight to the 16 gigabyte model, but at the moment, Apple is still trying to get rid of their eight gigabyte models like in Best Buy, Amazon, and things like this. And there's some really, really great discounted prices for the M3 with eight gigabytes of RAM. But the big question is, is that is it still worth paying those couple of extra hundred dollars to have 16 gigabytes of RAM? Well, today we're going to find out. We're going to compare the eight gigabyte version of the MacBook Air to the 16 gigabyte version of the MacBook Air in today's videos. We're doing some different kind of tests to see is it worth it for you to actually spend a bit more cash in getting the 16 gigabyte version. So moving along then, what I've got here is the identical MacBook Air. The only differences that we have between them is literally the RAM amount. I've even made sure that the amount of cores in the GPU is the binned version. So I'm talking about the eight core binned version of the GPU. The CPUs are exactly the same on the M3 models. It was just the GPU you could pick either an eight or 10 core version. So we both have here the eight core version. So what we're gonna do is then we're gonna start doing some tests then with this. And I think the first thing we're gonna actually test out is to actually see if we were just doing sort of one sort of browsing, you know, on a couple of tabs open, what that would be like on speedometer. Let's have a look. So we've got speedometer open here on both the eight gigabyte and the 16 gigabyte model here, all ready to go. Nothing else is open apart from Safari. And if I run the tests here, obviously they open up loads of different browsers, little websites and things like this, all in the same browser more like. And then obviously this will just complete in a few seconds. And look at the score here. What's quite unusual actually. We've got 42.3 on the eight gigabyte and we've got 41.7 on the 16 gigabyte. This is a little bit unusual, but we are similarish sort of speeds here. So personally, it could be a bit of Apple Silicon Lottery what's going on here, because obviously you might've heard this before that obviously some you know manufacturing of the chip is a bit better than the other. Maybe it's slightly better. Maybe that's the reason why the eight gigabyte was slightly ahead there. It was a bit unusual, but obviously there's not much in it whatsoever there. And mainly because we weren't really pushing out the RAM amounts inside either of these MacBooks. But let's try something different. Let's try doing a CPU render now on Blender. And what I've done for this, I've done the famous BMW render. I've got this set up on both of the devices here, both the products, and let's see then how long it takes to render the BMW famous orange one series, I think it was here, coupe or whatever it was called. And let's see then how long this actually takes on both of these MacBooks. So then what I've done is I've got the test running here on both of the MacBook Airs all at the same time here. You can see that the time remaining at the top there and the time that's already gone. So this is just running. And just to show you guys here how much memory pressure this is taking up here. This is the eight gigabyte sort of model here. You can see here it's using 5.8 gigabytes compared to the 16 gigabytes. We're using 10.3. Apple have allocated more to the applications obviously with this what is really, really useful to see. So let's see then what the actual differences does then and the actual time. So it actually took three minutes, 54 seconds here on the 16 gigabyte model, but then over on the eight gigabyte model, funny enough, it actually took three minutes, 55 seconds. So hardly not that much in it whatsoever. So that was quite interesting to see. But next of all, let's test out then Geekbench. Geekbench CPU and see what the difference is here. Let's see if extra RAM will make any difference whatsoever. Let's do a test right here. Now, personally, I don't think there's gonna be much difference here running Geekbench on either the eight gigabyte or the 16 gigabyte model that we have here. But let's begin this test then. Let's run the application, as you can see right here. They're both running. And let's have a look then at the actual results. So we got a single core 3,142 and 11,598 multi-core on the 16 gig. But then on the eight gig, we actually got 3,104 and 11,921. This is actually faster on the eight gig 
gigabyte model here. What's, you know, a little bit unusual to see. Very similar, but unusual. So really, again, I think, you know, the Silicon Lottery is playing with us here. But the main difference was that you can see having less RAM really didn't make any difference to the overall performance of the actual chip. And to be honest, that's kind of expected, really, because actually, you know, that's what Geekbench is doing. It's testing out the CPU. It's really not pushing out the sort of RAM sort of capabilities. Obviously, more RAM does help, but obviously Apple Silicon Lottery here, you know, it's not really helped too much. It's a bit unusual on this test, but it's good to see that we actually get different versions, you know, of Apple Silicon, of an M3, that some are tuned a bit better, some are tuned a little bit worse, but let's move on. And next of all, let's do a test for Cut Final Cut Pro. Let's do an export, the same video export. This is of a video that I made recently on my channel about the Mac Mini M4, why you should buy it. But let's test out the export speed in Hevec to see what the differences is here at 4K. Let's have a look at the differences. And for the first time, we actually are getting a difference here. Obviously, lower is better. The M3 8 gigabyte did it in 307 seconds, this Mac Mini video, whereas the M3 16 gigabyte model did it in 286. So that's 16 gigabytes around definitely did help out there. So this time then, obviously the 16 gigabyte model did shine a little bit more here. That extra bit of RAM did actually help out here, what was really, really good to see. But obviously it wasn't a lot. Obviously, if you're going to be just running Final Cut Pro, not gonna have any Safari in the background, Chrome or any other apps, Word, Outlook, you name it, in the background, obviously, you know, you could probably still buy yourself the eight gigabyte option. You're not really gonna see much of a difference there. But the main reason why we're wanting 16 gigabytes of RAM is because of multitasking and having multiple apps open at the same time. So what I've decided to throw into the mix here, so what I've decided to do here is open up 10 Safari tabs open here of the same websites and everything. We've got a good mixture of Apple, Google, you name it. There's all in here and they've got exactly the same tabs open on both of the Safaris on both of these machines. So what we're going to do is we're going to run similar tests again. So first First of all, let's see what happens now if we actually decide to do a Final Cut Pro export and see what happens to the results this time in the actual speed. So just to show you before I get started, obviously here's all the tabs open and obviously I've got Final Cut Pro in the background and then it's the same here with the eight gigabyte model. Obviously I've got Final Cut Pro and those tabs open and let's begin. So first of all, having a look here then on the 16 gigabyte, obviously I'm rendering right now and now if I obviously flick back, I can actually see an activity monitor how much more RAM we're using obviously with all of those tabs open and obviously doing the render you can see we're using around just under 12 or about 12 gigabytes of RAM out of the 16 that have been allocated so you know there's nothing going on there. there's not really much pressure too much pressure there we're in the green sort of zone and obviously if I flick back here I can still use my MacBook with 16 gigabytes I can flick around no problems nice and fast and quick there doesn't seem to be any kind of sort of slow down whatsoever here so this is really really good to see that this is happening here with the 16 gigabyte model I don't think there's really gonna be many issues whatsoever Oops, I didn't accept that there but obviously you can see I can just flick around the 15 different tabs no problems and going back to activity monitor even I've just flicked around you can see it's not really done much to that memory pressure whatsoever and then just to show you again if I can just quickly show you here Final Cut Pro is still rendering so yeah no problems there but then with the eight gigabyte model, again, I've just started the render. Obviously, you see it's at 2% there. And then obviously, let's now see if we can get um, Safari open. Same tabs again, the 10 of them. Obviously, Google, Yahoo, YouTube, and Mac Benchmark, you know, flicking around, flick around YouTube and everything here. All these sort of different tabs that I have, you know, doesn't seem too much. A little bit of slowdown there at last. We have a little bit. But obviously, yeah, elections and everything it is loading, but it's struggling a little bit more. That's what I can tell. Just only a tiny bit more, not too much more in actual noticeable speed. Maybe if I opened up something else at the same time, I would start to see even more of a slowdown. But there is definitely a bit of a difference. I am going to say it now. And obviously, oh, wow, there we go. Look at the memory pressure right here. There is a difference. Look at that. We're in the yellow here. We're using almost a full eight gigabytes. Look how much of the memory use we are using there. That is incredible. But let's have a look then at the actual export times. And you can see that the actual differences 
are very, very visible. Obviously, lower is better here. It took 387 seconds to do the export on eight gigabytes and 288 seconds there on the 16 gigabyte model. We're talking like around about a 25% difference there in source of speed. So yeah, to actually export a video with 10 Safari tabs open at the same time. And then next of all, what I think we should do, let's have a look then at speedometer 3.03 to see if that makes any differences there too. So again, I've got the 10 tabs open and let's just start the test here. Obviously that's running there, completing. Obviously the 10 tabs are open on both devices. Let's see what happens because it's quite quick this test. So just to let this run through to see if there's any sort of differences. Obviously with having multiple tabs open, 11 now in total. So obviously the 16 gigabyte, oh, finished quicker. But then look at the difference there. It's basically neck and neck, 43.3, 43.4. There's hardly any difference there. Obviously again, this might be Apple Silicon Lottery, I don't know. But there we go, that's just all in one app with multiple tabs. So this is quite interesting to see here. And there we have it then, guys. I think the conclusion has come clear. Obviously, one thing is definitely it's a silicon lottery out there. That's definitely been shown here today that obviously the 16 gigabyte model is actually slightly slower. But obviously, that's not going to be the case for you guys. It could be, it couldn't be. That's just the way how it is. You know, Google it, look it up on Reddit and everything. There's such thing as silicon sort of lottery. So I think that's what's happened here today. And it's actually good to show this, actually, not to show that obviously getting a faster amount or bigger amount of RAM obviously means a faster chip inside of it. But it does mean it though for certain tasks. What I'm going to come to the conclusion of this is that if you can get yourself the eight gigabyte model at a really, really good rate, and you're just going to use, say, open up Safari and open up, say, up to, say, 10 tabs and have, say, Word open, then eight gigabytes of RAM is probably going to do you absolutely fine. But if you are a person who's going to have Word open, 10 tabs open, you're also going to be exporting at the same time in Final Cut Pro and things like this, then obviously probably 16 gigabytes of RAM is probably going to be better for you on this one. And I think, you know, that's the great thing. I'm not saying that the eight gigabytes is terrible because it's not. For some people's use needs out there, the eight gigabytes is still going to be a great machine. And don't feel disheartened if you bought one like three months ago and the 16 gigabytes. Today has proven that fact for you to now that it's not really too much of a difference there for generally if you're just going to use single app tasks out there. Obviously, what I would say is obviously if you brought yourself a brand new eight gigabyte model and you can return it and get the 16 gigabyte the same price, then obviously it's a no brainer to do that. But I think we can get the conclusion here then for, like I said, for most single tasks, you know, eight gigabytes is really not going to make much difference to the 16 gigabytes. But if you're opening up multiple apps all at the same time, 16 gigabytes of RAM is definitely probably worth buying for you. But with that as well, guys, what do you think? Do you think it's worth getting 16 gigabytes over eight gigabytes? Or do you think if an eight gigabyte model is on sale at a really good discount, it's worth buying that one instead? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest app on news, reviews, and comparisons like we've done today, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.